Triggers, no cat, bitch. No cat TV. I got a special guest. Philly's on. No Philly's on at that. Dapper. Already, man. Right now, we listen to Road to Riches. That's off of Days for Nothing. For sure. For sure. Anything you want to talk about it? Oh, man. We on the Road to Riches, man. If they know, they know. They know, they know. <laughs> um, Thanks for Nothing. Is that your first part of it? It's not my first project. It's my first like album, like my first body of work that's Complete. like, out, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. It's out there for sale. Okay. People tuned in, and it's a. Uh, it feel like my first joint. Like it feel like you know how it'd be like the people think it's like an overnight success type mm-hmm. thing. So I put out probably like three projects before that, mm. yeah, but this was the first one that really caught. You know what I mean? And the first time that I really, the first project I put out with me going full throttle, me taking it serious, and me mm-hmm. having a foundation and a team behind me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Um. So, in your lyrics, I hear you, you you went to Penn State. I went to Temple. Went to Temple? Uh-huh. All, All right. boys went to Penn State. Oh, I used to be up there a lot. Okay. Yeah. That's where you started, like, really rapping? Uh, I used to, I played ball my freshman year. I was playing at this uh, D2 school out in um, Massachusetts. I played a little D, uh, D2 ball my freshman year, and then I transferred to Temple. Mm-hmm. But while I was out there my freshman year, all the way in Massachusetts, like, I was kind of bored, so I just started doing, like, just putting the pen to the pad, man. Just started <laughs> writing out there, and and it just started clicking. And I'm like, they like, yo, you kind of high. Like we used to freestyle on the mm-hmm. buses to the game and all that, and they was just like, yo, you kind of high. You might as well put this to use. Right. Like, all right. But I started got- recording when I got the Temple though, my first, my uh, second year at Temple. You got the cadence. That's what yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. And everybody don't have the cadence for, for like, sure. especially when you do lyrics, and that's what you really spit. You spit mm-hmm. straight lyrics, something that you gotta think about, something that's gonna motivate you, inspire you. And that's what we really need out of Philly. Mm. And I like really want to salute you first. I appreciate that, brother. Thank for just you. doing that Thank and you. putting on for right. the city. Um, but you do so much more than just music. Yes. And I'll be doing the podcast, no justice, if I don't talk about Teddy P. Oh, man, yeah. Teddy Pendergrass. And yeah. it's crazy. I had another <laughs> guest who actually knew Teddy Pendergrass and gave him a nickname, Flyest Man Alive. Yeah. yeah. Who, who so who's uh, his name The name Flyest Man Alive, but okay. he, he sell uh, glasses, and he called God of Glasses and stuff. Mm. And he met him uh, growing up in North Philly, because he, he grew up in like a nice town area. Okay. And now... Uh, he be, he, not the dude that be at uh, Broad Area all the time. I think so, yo. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I That's exactly funny. That's funny. Uh, but um, Teddy P, the movie. Yeah, that was, so it was, it was more like documentary style. Okay. So, um... It wasn't like me really showing out my full blown acting abilities, but I was able to mirror who he was and was able to um like reenact him. I was like a younger like the younger adult version of Teddy. You're not talking about the one on Showtime. The one on Showtime, yeah. I seen that y'all. Yeah, it's on Showtime. I see, yo, you look familiar yeah. and I'm not putting it on Showtime. Like I'm not thinking like yo. Yeah. But that's yeah, you? <laughs> that's me on Showtime. That's that, me driving a Rolls Royce and then like pretty much like the whole beginning is like yeah. me mirroring him. So it's not like too much like Full blown, you know, like the new edition movie yeah. and all that. But they are working on the Teddy P film, and um, you, you, know. you look like him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, what I my pop said. He that's said, funny. "Yo, that look just like Teddy P." <laughs> and it's, he usually do the podcast with me. He had something to do, so it's crazy Yo, that you like funny. here. Um, yeah, that was that was beautiful, man. Because it was like, like you know, prior I heard of him. I mm-hmm. didn't know who he really like. Full blown, I didn't really lock in. You know, he's right. back in the in the eighties, seventies, or whatnot. And um, probably not that early, but like the eighties, Teddy P was around and. You know, I told my mom when I had booked the role and all that, and she was like, yo, she just started crying because my, uh, my grandma passed. Uh, dad, it's been like four years now. Mm. But that see. was my grandma's very favorite artist. And <laughs> the only concert that she ever went to in her life was a Teddy Pendergrass concert. Yeah, that's in the making. You that's, know what I'm that's saying? That's in the work. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, like, and, I, and I'm big on that. I'm big on energy. I'm big on God's plan. And I feel like that was like my calling because like my promise to my grandma was, um, I'm going to be on TV for you. And like <laughs> I kind of was hurt because... I never hit TV before, before she, she before she passed, All right. and it's like that. The it's probably the second biggest thing that I've done to date, and that was I feel like that was a gift from her. her you know yeah, I'm, I'm big on that. You and know, so it was a gift from her, yeah. and she wanted you to do it, and yeah. she just, seen just you do Teddy, it. You, you know what I'm saying? saying? It's yeah, like, yo, like, I know she's seen it. You know what I mean? Like, and it kind of came mm-hmm. at the right time. It wasn't like they was making Teddy P documentaries all exactly. crazy. So yep. it's kind of it's like a blessing, like For you said. Sure. For sure. Um, but even with that, how did you get into like acting? The way acting came about, and I tell this story like all the time, like because oh, I, like, I, I know it specifically. You know okay. what I mean? I know exactly what it was, and I always remember to mention this girl's name at the same time. Um, so while I was at Temple, I was doing music, 
and I was rapping and I started picking up a buzz at Temple and there was this girl named Serena, uh, not Serena, uh, Selena Carrera mm -hmm. and she's a nice singer. Uh, her name's Cage Bird name now. That's her uh, stage name. Okay. And at the time she was singing and we were going to Temple together and I was doing my thing with the music and she just sent me like a, a text like, hey, like, yo, what's up, Dad? <laughs> um, you, uh, have you ever thought about acting? I'm like, no, not paying it no mind blowing right. at all. And she's like, okay, well, this lady that represents me, she acts. They're looking for rappers in the area to do some acting or whatever. Um, I think you should submit for it. I'm like, all right, whatever. So, it's blowing it off once right. again, right? So she um, sends it to me. The people get in contact with me, shoot me an email. I pay attention. I look at the email. They like send your resume, send your headshots. I'm like, I don't got no headshots. Right. I don't got no acting resume. <laughs> I send a little resume about my music accomplishments. Sent those, some kind of picture of me or whatever. Next thing you know, I got an audition, right? <laughs> she sent me the script, and it's, uh, it's um, the role of Hakeem on Empire. You know what I mean? My <laughs> very first audition ever. Never paid acting, no mind, oh, whatever. Man. She sent me the audition or whatever. I'm like, so I'm looking at Hakeem, whatever, boop, boop, boop. I see Lee Daniels at the top. You know, at the time, like, you know, I'm not... Really known to his name yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. not in tune with the craft. Right. Now, there's not too many people you can mention. And don't know it. And right. don't know because now I'm in tune with my craft. You feel me? But at the time, I wasn't in tune with the craft. So I see Lee Daniels. I'm like, damn, that sounds familiar. I go and look it up. I'm like, wait, Oprah, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, um, dang, what's the name of it? Uh, the John, uh, that had Oprah in it. Oh my God. Uh, um, color, not color, not purple. color purple. Uh, <sighs> And they gonna kill us on this. Yeah, they gonna know. kill us on this. I'm sad. I, I, I uh, don't know enough. Yo, about. we don't know right now. Comment. <laughs> the Butler, not the Butler. It's something like that. Is it the Butler? You might have been whatever there. the case was. I think it's the Butler, but whatever you the case is, right. it's the Oprah Winfrey joint and um, Lee Daniels correlated and all that, directed and all that. So I'm like, oh snap! I Google. I'm looking. I'm like, oh, Empire. I'm like, oh, this might be big. I come on. I'm like, yo, mom, I just got this audition. Da da. Mm -hmm. She's like, what? Lee Daniels is here. You know, she know all the time. I'm like, all right, bet. <laughs> So I take it serious. I remember it clear as day. This is when I had just moved off campus at Temple. And I was sitting in my bed. And I just was locked in on it. And I'm reading over it. You know, I'm practicing in the mirror and all that. Like, literally raw. Like, no experience at all. And I go into this audition. Dude, I'm like, yo, I think I did pretty good. <laughs> a week later, I get a call back. Like, yo, uh, we want you to come back. And um, you got a call back for the audition. We want you to come back. And, um... And do it again. Do know, it again. Do it in front of uh, the producers and the, and the director and all that. And I'm like, yo. So I'm like, yo, it's down to the wire. Whatever. Right. So I come back. I do it. Uh, I do good again. Lee Daniels wasn't there. It was the producers there. Next thing you know, they fly me out to Chicago. Mm. I go to Chicago, do it again. That's where it shot at. When right. I get, yeah, that's where it shot at in Chicago. I do it in front of Lee Daniels. You know, they commended me this. And I'm like, yo, this is my first time, only audition I've been on in my life. Mm. A week later, I'm on a train going to D.C. somewhere. And I get the call from my agent. She's like, uh, Anthony, uh, her name's Viola. And um, and she's like, Anthony, I just want you to know that you were wonderful. You were great. <laughs> but they went in a different direction. And that's when they chose Yaz. You know, okay, Yaz is yeah. an artist from Philly and all that. So they uh, went with him. It was out of, I think, me, him, and Rotomy. Rotomy is the one that plays oh, the power. Oh, uh, power now. Mm -hmm. he, uh, yeah, that's, some big, that's some tough competition. Yeah. So that was like, and that was my very first, first experience. Yeah. So she's like, hey, Anthony, you think we could keep submitting you on stuff? Like, is already if we add you to our roster? I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, now I'm excited yeah, yeah, about right. it. Next thing you know, the very next thing they sent me out on, I booked it. Mm. So it's just like, damn, this is like a, a gift. This is a craft that right. I never tapped into. But I feel like music and acting kind of go hand in hand, you know what I mean? It prepares you for, like, acting has got me, turned me into a better rapper. Rapping has, has me the confidence and the, the, the swag, uh, the swag to be yeah, yeah. Really good on camera, you know what I mean? So they all go hand in hand. And then it's just entertainment. Like, it's just me fulfilling my purpose like i uh like i've been big on that lately i just found out that my perfect purpose was to inspire others mm -hmm. whether it's through my words or whether it's through my craft and i just been capitalizing on that and i know it's through acting i know it's through music i know it's through my entrepreneurship everything i do has some sort of inspiring to other people whether it's young people older people whatever right. and i know like if you sit down and tell me like yo man i've been dragging i ain't got no motivation i'm gonna sit there and i'm gonna have a full conversation with you because that's my purpose that's mm. my gift and that's gonna be my gift to you that's what i get fulfillment out of inspiring right. other people you feel me so that's like my thing and, uh, yeah and i feel that like um that's really what i want to do with no cap tv is yeah. just to inspire people to motivate people mm. uh giving that platform for people like you to right. motivate them and to get known on what you're working yeah, on yeah right? we need that man it ain't it ain't enough platforms really yo it and it's something that you posted yesterday uh you said they finally catching on mm. last night mm -hmm. and i said hey that's the thing with philly you would never Pop in Philly first. You got to yeah. go outside of Philly, yep. pop there, and then come back home. And then mm -hmm. everybody ride away. And it's just, it's a sad thing 
a sad truth, but right. I guess they gotta see the work first yeah, before they ride and, and that's how it is. It's tough here. It's tough competition. It's yeah. uh, it's not easy. Like we're not pushovers. You know nah. what I'm saying? So it's not like oh he doing this thing here. You know what I mean? They want to see you. You gotta prove yourself. You right. really gotta prove yourself before people really start paying homage here. And then it's like even with the Philly rap audience. The game is just like people been there ten years strong, just rapping locally in mm-hmm. Philly, and it's just yeah, we got a little selling here. Yeah, the selling's real low here. Yeah, and, and, and at least you like, see it. Yeah, the selling's low here. I know it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying and it's uh like when once you hit that selling, it's like damn, what's next? What's you know next? What I'm saying it's uh and that's and that's what you do different. Mm-hmm. You found a different path other than when the music dry up. All right, mm-hmm. now you gonna see me on this movie. Yeah. You gonna see me on this show mm-hmm. and that type of skill that you create and it's something that's god gifted for sure and that every person in this world has they mm-hmm. just got to tap in and sacrifice absolutely and i believe yeah, that and that's what i always say i uh always say it's just like the, the shirt the hoodie i'm wearing it's called face your fears and it's mm-hmm. just always a matter of like facing your fears there's no difference between me and the next person it's just that i face my fears i'm fearless i got the confidence to say to take a gamble to take a risk and and to be uh to be um fearless fearless you yeah, know what i mean that's it. uh I forget that I'm not sure what word I was trying to find, but just really just um uh to be humiliated. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm okay with being humiliated. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I'm okay with failing. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you got to go through a failure in order to be successful. That I make, failed multiple times. Make you stronger. Make you stronger, man. Right. Uh, I want people to understand that yeah. like, you don't, yo, you don't fail. Like, Nipsey, Nipsey also said, the difference between me and any other rapper was I just didn't quit. Mm-hmm. I failed been knocked down plenty of times you just mm-hmm. never see me quit and that's mm-hmm. all and that's all i ever like tell yeah. people that come here just make sure you keep grinding keep working hard because i definitely see what you doing and this whole city see what you're doing no cat no cat <laughs> uh anything else that we can touch on before I, I... as far as the acting the music not even acting music just the daycare just the young with options like that's a yeah, big no, deal man, yeah so you know just um I use the music and I use the acting as leverage. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I know that. Can I explain what's leverage to people? You sure can. Yo, leverage is when you got this type of asset or value to what you're doing, and now you got people backing you and saying, hey, now let's make these moves mm-hmm. and let's work. Mm-hmm. And that's what leverage is. You can keep yeah, on going. Absolutely. Got to gotta inform sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. You got to put them in, man. It's nothing like asking. People got to ask questions. People got to be in- Foreign. people got you got to break it down to people yeah and, you know like i use the music and i use the acting as leverage so that i'm able to generate money off of that i, I realize that i do have that as a talent mm-hmm. a lot of people don't exploit their talents a lot of people may know their talent people that i know a lot of great artists mm. whether it's pen paper whatever i know a lot of creatives that don't exploit their talents and that's once again facing your fears right. you know what i'm saying and it's just i use the music and the acting as leverage because that's my talent i know that it gave me what platform that I have. That's why I'm always going to continue to do that. But I'm also always going to expand off into business ventures that's going to bring in revenue or mm. that's going to make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like the daycare brings in revenue and it makes a difference. I make money from the government, but I'm making a difference in my community. Mm. The families don't really come out of pocket. You know, like when we get cash parents and people that got to come out of pocket, I'm like, ah, like I cringe when I got to actually charge a family, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, makes what I mean? sense. And I'm, and I'm super lenient, you know what I mean? Like, I do everything that I can to make it convenient. And it's like, if not me, then who? You know what I mean? Right. Like, and I think that's what separates our daycare from a lot of people. Like, we've been open for a little over a year, and we've been at capacity for a minute now. You know hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like, that's just off of good energy. That's right. off of good vibes. And you know when it's genuine. The kids come here, and they know when it's genuine. Right. You know what I mean? I just mean? came like, in, they was all smiling and cheering. Like, they, they go crazy, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? When they see me, they go crazy. When they see my teachers, they go crazy because as a leader... I only hire, only pick those same teachers that got that same energy that I got. Right. You know what I mean? If I don't get a good vibe from you, you can't work here. You right. know what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's like that with any business. Working with that I'm kids be a is a passion of. too. It got to be a passion because yeah. there's not too much money in it. Right. So it got to be a passion. It got to be something that you're driven, driven by. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like, and like, I'm, like all of my teachers have that same feel. Like, man, I want to see these kids win. You yeah. Know what I mean, my director, she wants. She's like all about the kids, all about the next generation. And it's like. I don't have any kids of my own. So it's like, when I come in here, man, it's like, yo, like, these kids are so cool. Like, that's, I can't imagine, like, being a, a parent that just don't want to see their kids. Like, how, how can you possibly mm. miss out? Like, you're... On your child's life. Yo, that, that first walk. Like, I done seen some of these kids <laughs> had a first walk. You right. know what I mean? It's like, yo, like... like that's crazy. Like, as a father, like, how could you possibly want to miss out on that? Like, I, I know I could never be like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I couldn't imagine not 
not going to all my son football games or my daughter dance recital. Like, Facts. man, this stuff is beautiful. And right. it's like, and I got uh, nieces, nephews, and little brothers who, who like, I support in that way. These kids here, I support in that way. You know right. what I mean? It's like, and and even like being a male in daycare is like. That's a rare. It's a rare. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But but you see the difference also. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm not here all the time. Like this is you know something that I I'm a part of. You know, it's like I'm the I'm the sole owner of it. But I'm not always here. I'm not a teacher. You know right, what I'm saying? So I but like when I do come here, you could tell that it's like yo, you coming back, Mr. Anthony? You know what right. I'm saying? Like yo, what's up? You know, and that's something. That, yeah, so that's something like that special. You're inspiring them. You see what I'm saying? You're inspiring yeah. somebody at a younger age. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? To know like mm-hmm. I can be much more than just right. your average boy in the corner. Mm-hmm. I, I had a, a powerful moment with a kid like the other day. Like um, I had uh did the drop off, so I came early one day and um because we do pick up and drop offs from the local elementary schools. Okay. And I uh, took the kids to school that morning, and um, I just had them repeating after me like just little stuff like, <laughs> "Yo, I will be successful. I will be able to take care of my mom. Yeah. I will not be the same as." Da 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 da. You know what I mean, and man? Like, you could just hear the, it, like them really believing. Yeah. At six years old, seven years right. old, they're really believing that. They're really inspired by it. And like, so down the line, they're be like, man, it was this, it was this man, yo, like yo, yeah, mm-hmm. he'd be on TV. But I remember when him, when he used to take me to school, he used to tell me like that means a lot. Right, you know? right. And my kids, like my kids, be seeing me on TV. My kids be, Mister, yo, you be on YouTube, like, you know, like you yeah, know, that's like that's love. I saw you on YouTube. My aunt follow you on Instagram. She said you. With, you know what I mean? Like, that's your number one supporter yo, right there. My kids be going crazy, man. <laughs> man it's like, that's crazy. That's love. Yeah, that's love. real it's funny, genuine man. love, yeah, man. It's funny. And it's like, and then it's like, like, even like in my music, like you could hear like in my music the my morals. You know what I'm saying? You could hear that I'm not talking about no shoot 'em up, bang, bang. I'm not talking about no drugs. Mm-hmm. I don't do no drugs. I don't have no bad habits. I don't have no vices. So you could tell my that I got character. Right. So it's not like like, why would I want to go to a rapper's daycare? Like, I'm not talking about the same thing that they talking about. They talking, about. right. And, like, and then, you know, like, there's people that go to church every day but still go to the club, but that don't change who they are. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like, I have my stuff with me, but, like, when it comes to, like, this field, if I'm not educated about it, I'm not really going to go into it. So, like, this is something that I know a lot about. You know what I mean? Right. And, it's, and I have a, I hired a staff that knows even more than I do. So, that's how, that's how yeah. good bosses do. You go to hire yeah, people. You got, you, yeah, you know, in order to be successful out like here, you got to have a team. Like I can't be the smartest on my team. I right. can't be the richest on my team. Right. If, I, if I'm like that, I'm going to lose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got to have people around me that's smart. You shouldn't want to be like that either. You don't, you don't, don't want to be the smartest it's on your team. Or the riches, yeah. Or the riches on your team. Facts. And then, then your circle too small. You know what I mean? You got to expand. Right. Um, business, music, acting. Yeah. What else? Anything else, man? Man. Couldn't say modeling. I seen you in like a commercial or something, right? <laughs> yeah, I was, that's uh, that's where like I would get most of the money off of the acting. It's mainly like uh, commercial work. The, uh, I was in a couple of Boost Mobile commercials. I was in um, a Nike commercial and uh, and a foot, foot action commercial. They send you free Nikes or no? No, nah, they didn't uh, send me free uh, Nikes, but them, them, them checks is, is cute. <laughs> oh, that's all that Nike, matters. Yeah, you get some air horns cute. off of that, man. <laughs> My people, that's- do the horns on me. Dang, get some yeah. gunshots and horns <laughs> off, man. You deserve all that, man. Thank you, bro. Thank you. But um, before we uh leave out, That's I just right. gotta tell you my favorite song of Dance What's for Nothing. That? What's that? And that so far so close. I don't oh, know man. why, but when it start, I got that feel. That man. feel. Man, I got that arena that feel. Re- oh, that man. that Meek Mill intro that, Ooh, that gets you started. Ones. You feel me? Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. It's so far so close, man. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Kay, man. This is uh, uh, she's only sixteen. She's an artist from Philly, also. That okay. That we got in the camp right now. We working with. So you she, got people actually good. actually working with too. Oh yeah. Um, uh, shout them out, then, man. Oh man, it's uh pretty much Kay. Uh, she's not like you know signed to me or nothing like right. that, but she's family and mm-hmm. um somebody that I really support and want to see win. Um, as far as like artists, that's probably like the only artist that who you're gonna see me really working with often okay. and really supporting a lot. But yeah, she's special, man. She's special. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, also, I like to tell, as the fans, so fans usually like to know something about you outside right. of your music acting. In. So three things that they don't know about you. I mean, something that you like, something that the females can bring you, it make you feel Ooh. good. I don't know, man. I'm just trying to help you out right now. Man, I like to make my girls feel good. So All right. I like to cook. I like, right. you know I mean, I like to do the, I like to do the little cooking thing. I'm a good cook. At least I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I got 15 siblings. A lot of people don't know that. Okay. Um, but Family man. That's yeah. You gotta know. But uh, but I'm a single kid by my mom. So okay. my pop, my pop was a Rolling, Rolling Stone. Stone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he wild. Um. Uh, try to think. What else I could give y'all? Um, I'm a college graduate. I went to Temple. Graduated from Temple. College graduates, man. Yeah, Shout out, uh, man. Yeah, graduated Morgan State. Oh, pleasure, man. man Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, that's man. Good, bro. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was the uh, first on both sides of my family to graduate college. I guess that's a good gem I could yeah. drop on them. Yeah, always, those, those, always. My, those are my three joints. That's yeah. a good gem. You see what I'm saying? Girls mm-hmm. don't say you got degrees and you got three jobs and you got three jobs and a degree. So, right. ladies, I mean, my <laughs> hand up, bro. I mean, um, oh man. Before I even leave out, dog, you got a feature from Stolly. Yeah, <laughs> that's my one of my favorite artists. I'm yeah. G. I've been rocking with him since like Fountains of Youth. Yeah, so, he fired. He fired. How homie. did you get the feature? That's the homie. Uh, Stolly, when I was going to Temple, there was a, uh, a, 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 a store down there, uh, like, so mixtapes called Phenomenal Records. Okay. It's right next to where City View was at. It just shut down probably like two years ago. Mm. But while I was there, my old head Jay and BJ. BJ is Stolly's manager. Okay. And they used to be up there. They like BJ used to come and visit Jay all the time. And I used to live there. Like his music and his mm-hmm. on campus. So I used to live there. Right. Me and Jay used to be together all the time. I used to go in there and mess with my old head. BJ came through there. Stolly came through there. Hollered at Stolly while he was in there. All right, cool. Yeah, I remember your face. We took a little pic. Two years later, we doubled back. I reached out to BJ. I'm like, you know, just at this time, I'm just like, yo, trying to utilize my resources. I right. hit him up, like, yo, you remember me? I'm Elder J, folks. He's like, yeah, young boy, da da da. Yeah, I see you catching momentum. Oh, you, yeah, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. he like, he see what I'm doing, like what I got going. Man, I sent Stolly the verse. I emailed. Him. I was like, yo, you think Stolly hop on his joint? Send him the verse. He sent that joint back in probably like two days, like like less than a nah, two days. Nah, that's like, love. Yeah, he sent that's it back love. with a fire verse on it. I'm like, yeah. oh man! Everybody, like, yeah, this one is Stolly. And he shots you out too. Uh, you know yeah, what I mean? Paying that's homage paying homage, homage yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah. A lot of people don't get it, Talking man. Philly, yeah, that's that's Stolly. That's touching bases, man. Money ain't buying happy. I mean, soften the tears, sipping mimosas on a yacht, just spitballing ideas. I yeah, mean, that's no cat TV, man. <laughs> Who else can bring you dapper, man? Live from Philly, man. Yeah, Live man. from Young with Options, man. Yeah, options, they at capacity, man. but one day they gonna go to, to, look, to elementary school. So we are gonna open up another one too. We working on that, man. We got look, man. We just working, we working man. man. And that's, I got a question for you, bro. I got a question for you. Uh, wh- like, how, how'd you get hip to my hip to my music? Like, wh- all right, when so you this, catch, catch info, I'm gonna be man. honest. And I'm gonna be honest, like everybody that's gonna be honest. No cat. See you on shave room. Pop Shit. up. Ah. I said, dang. I like Philly du- Philadelphia rapper. Right. Open up a date. I'm like, that's, it. that's just an odd joint. Like, that's love. From Philly? Like, that, yeah, all we rap about is guns and willies. So, I'm going in music. I'm like, oh, this is something different. That's this crazy. is a different vibe. This is yeah. something get you inspired, get you motivated. Right. Straight lyrics. Mm-hmm. And that's what like really caught me on to you. And then, um, start asking females. Right. Oh, Dapper? Oh, that's... <laughs> that's where you really get the dirt. Yeah. It's like, oh, I love his music. Da 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 da. Ooh, you see what I'm saying? That's good energy, right? That's there. good energy. And that's then I good. had a, I had a fuck with him on my gram. I said, then I get the dapper interview, uh-huh. and I already talked to you. Right, right. But I just said, hey, I want to see what they, they say. They it was uh, like eighty percent. No, ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. So Ooh, we, we gonna talk that talk. Talk that now. talk now, man. You feel me? <laughs> we out, man. That's love, man. That's love, man. That's yeah, dapper, man. It's like yo. Flyest man alive, you, you raggedy bitches. bitches. We- Triggers no cat, bitch.